following some breaking news out in D.C. Former Trump White House official Peter Navarro indicted today on contempt charges after defying a subpoena from the House panel investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. He is speaking right now outside of the U.S. District Court there. We want to roll it from the top. Another day in paradise here. So what do you think will happen today? Let me, uh, let me just make a statement here, if I may. Uh, <clears throat> on uh, Tuesday, uh, in this courtroom right here, I filed uh, a civil suit against the Kangaroo Committee on the Hill, uh, seven partisan Democrats, two Rhino Republicans. Um, the essence of that civil suit was that the subpoenas issued by the committee uh, are ultra virus unlawful and unenforceable. And I made that case based on four legal arguments. Uh, the first is that this committee is neither duly authorized nor properly constituted, meaning that it doesn't follow the rules of either the House itself or the committee's own authorizing resolution. I would refer you to the civil suit, but it's HRES 8 uh, and HRES 1037. I am not the only one who has filed uh, to question the validity of that kangaroo committee. Nancy Pelosi herself calls that committee unprecedented, and she's absolutely right. The second point, um, and, and by the way, um, my book, Taking Back Trump's America. I need everybody in America to buy that book on Amazon today. That is for two reasons. One is that's going to be my legal defense fund because these people are coming at me hard. Number two, that book is about why we need to take the House of Representatives back from the kangaroos on Capitol Hill. The second case, part of the civil case, is simply that over a five-year period, Congress has weaponized the investigatory powers of Congress in a way which is unconstitutional. The people of America need to understand Congress has the right to investigate, but only for non-punitive legislative purposes. What that kangaroo committee is doing right now is investigating for punitive purposes. They're essentially acting as judge, jury, and executioner, their mission, their clear mission is to prevent Donald John Trump from running for president in 2024 and being elected for president. And people like me are in their way, and they're not coming for me and Trump, they're coming for you. All 74 million of you who voted for Donald John Trump. So, hang on, I'm not finished. You need to read, do your homework, read that. I, that case went out, uh, every one of you, I bet there isn't a single person in here who read that whole case. The third issue is, is that the Constitution is a prohibition against what's called bills of attainders, okay? This is bills against undue punishment of citizens of this country. Today, the punishment was in, which was inflicted on a man presumed innocent and innocent until proven guilty demonstrates the utter disregard for the Constitution and the law that the Department of Justice has. I sent them a letter on Wednesday offering a modus vivendi. I told them, contact an individual who would discuss this matter. What did they do? They didn't call me. I spoke to the, the FBI agent who arrested me. I spoke to him Wednesday night. I said, Walter, whatever you need, you don't have to come banging on my door like you did last week getting me out of bed. I'm here to cooperate, okay? What did they do, right? I, I was on my way to Nashville today to do a TV appearance with Mike Huckabee's show, right? And instead of coming to my door where I live, which, by the way, is right next to the FBI, 
Instead of calling me and say, hey, we need you down at court. We've got a warrant for you. I would have gladly come. What did they do? They intercepted me getting on the plane. And then they put me in handcuffs. They bring me here. They put me in leg irons. They stick me in a cell. By the way, just historical note, I was in John Hinckley's cell. They seem to think that that was like an important historical note. Okay? That's punitive. That, that what they did to me today violated the Constitution. But Peter, in my lawsuit, in my lawsuit, I discussed going back to Nixon, GSA, and other cases that what this government is supposed to do when they have an issue such as they've had, and this is not the first rodeo they've had, they've had plenty of people question the validity of their subpoenas. What they're supposed to do is take the least burdensome alternative. I told them, go negotiate with Donald John Trump and his attorneys because I'm in an untenable constitutional position. There's no settled law on this. There's no settled law. And by the way, the law leans squarely towards my right to senior testimony immunity and President Trump's right to executive privilege. What did they do? They didn't negotiate with the president, as I asked him. That would have been the least burdensome. They didn't file a civil suit like they did with Mears and Bolton back in the Bush administration when they didn't control the Justice Department. What did they do? They, they, they just came with the full force of the federal government and put the hammer down trying to intimidate me. Peter. Mr. Peter, All right, now hang you, on. You can play, Peter. You can, you one, can play. One, one last thing. Nobody, one last thing. I have represented myself pro se in this matter because part of the Democrats' strategy is to engage in what is called lawfare, which is to say to use the legal system for effectively coercion and illicit ends. I do not want to spend several hundred thousand dollars on lawyers. But the reason why I'm here, and this is not about me, folks, not about me here. This is about a constitutional principle that is important to effective presidential decision making. And what the Justice Department is doing is wrong on all manner of counts. All right, let me stop Peter. here. Now, let me I'll warn you here. I'm not going to answer any questions pertaining to the case, because with this indictment and arrest, um, I can't speak specifically about legal matters. So, Peter, so I'm you, warning Peter, you, you are, on that, okay? Peter, you and if are, I get questions to that, I'm going to have to just find my way uh, to my home. Yes, ma'am. Are you willing to go behind bars over this? And is there any chance that you would cooperate with the committee? I made it very clear that the, the, the least burdensome path for the committee and what was required by case law, settled case law, is for them to first go and negotiate executive privilege and testimony immunity with President Trump. They did not do that. What they did was they colluded with the White House to have Joe Biden engaged in the fanciful and absurd notion that somehow a sitting incumbent could strip his predecessor of executive privilege and me of testimony immunity. It does not fly. So that is a, an important principle that I think lays partly at the heart uh, of this case. So let's, as the boss likes to say, let's see what happens going forward. But I have, I have uh, on Wednesday, I reached out to the Justice Department. I offered them a possible way forward, a modus vivendi. They responded with uh, effectively the same kind of thing you'd see in Stalinist Russia or uh, the Chinese Communist Party. And I note, interestingly, for the record, that the only two people who have been indicted on criminal charges are me and Stephen K. Bannon. And we're also the only, one of the few people in this world who have been sanctioned by the Chinese Communist Party. This government is acting like an authoritarian government, whether it's vax man or this case or anything in between. Peter, yes, sir. So 
you complained last week. You were in the court. Yes, I was. You heard what I had to say. You can report on that. One of the things you complained about was the fact that they came to your door last Thursday to present the subpoena. Uh, So today they didn't come to your door. They met you at the airport. So I'm just trying to make sure. As I said, on Wednesday, I said, look, to to Walter Giordano, I said, Walter, I'm here. You don't have to bang on my door in the, or in the early morning. I'll take whatever subpoena you want. I let them know that at the Justice Department. There was no reason on God's good earth for what they did today to an American citizen. That did not have to happen. It's terrorism. It's coercion. It, there's no excuse for what they did today. And America needs to know this. And I want to, again, taking back Trump's America buy on Amazon. I need that out to the public. That's the blueprint they're taking back. The Congress from Pelosi's terrorists and the White House from Joe Biden. Yeah. If, uh, Mr. Navarro, you mentioned Who are you from? President Trump on the Fox. You mentioned that you've uh, invoked, invoked President, uh, former President Trump multiple times. Have you spoken to him about your legal decision? I, I, don't talk about, I don't talk about my discussions with President Trump ever. The next and, question. And, no, wait, and a follow up. Do you feel that if you had been cooperating with the committee at any point, that you wouldn't be in this predicament that you're following yourself right now? The committee is an unlawful committee that does not abide by its own authorization or its own procedures. I mean, look, here's the thing you, you, the reporters, like, the best reporting that's come out on this wasn't from America. It was from the Daily Mail. Why is that? Okay, but if you do um, your homework on this, and it's all in my civil suit, HR uh, H Res Eight, which is General Authorizing Resolution of this Congress, says that in order for a committee to issue subpoenas, they have to have a ranking minority member. Full stop. Full stop. The authorizing resolution for this committee says it has to have a ranking minority member to issue subpoenas. Guess what? Nancy Pelosi refused to place not only a ranking minority member on that committee, she refused to put the other four people that Kevin McCarthy put forward to her. Instead, without his consultation, another violation of the rules, she put on Liz Cheney and, and, uh, and Adam Kinzinger, who I argue in the civil suit obviously have score settling and access to grind. These are ultra virus, unenforceable, unlawful subpoenas. And that committee uh, should never have been formed. I blame, as, as much as I blame Pelosi and Schiff and Raskin, I also blame Kevin McCarthy. He, he knew right at the outset that they were breaking the rules and he didn't stand up right then. And shame on Kevin McCarthy. Now he's got his own subpoena. It'd be interesting to see whether they hold him in contempt, whether he winds up over here. I doubt it. What is this? Interesting. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Say again? Do you expect your arraignment to be delayed past June? Yeah, it's going to be a legal question. If you were sitting there, you, uh, you understood. Um, my arguments. I do believe, as I stated in the courtroom, that um, this was a preemptive strike by the Department of Justice to prevent my civil suit from going forward. And shame on them. And the evidence of that is simply I filed that civil suit on Tuesday. I sent them a uh, communication on Wednesday trying to offer some kind of modus vivendi. And instead of Responding to that, instead of having the FBI agent call cordially and ask me to come down and go through this, uh, whatever it is, uh, they didn't do that. They just put the hammer down. uh, And no American citizen, no American citizen should have to go through what I went through today, um, who is trying to do the right thing. I'm trying to do my duty to this country. I'm in an untenable position. The Constitution is on my side on this, and I'm just trying to hold hold that ground. And I'm up against partisans who want to uh, weaponize Congress and abuse 
uh, the, the uh, tools of the, of the federal government. What Who was else? The, Anybody when else? came to your house on Wednesday, the FBI, what was that? What, what was that? I mean, that it wasn't was Wednesday. It was last, last week. They were delivering uh, a subpoena uh, to have me. It's a very interesting subpoena because um, they were commanding me to submit documents to the grand jury. Grand Jury 22-3, to be exact. And they weren't compelling my testimony. They weren't commanding me to come and testify. They were simply commanding me to deliver documents. And the, 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 the untenable constitutional position we have here, uh, and there's a whole lot of other issues with those subpoenas, um, is um, I have uh, testimony immunity, uh, and the president... Uh, there's Trump executive privilege. Uh, so um, it, you know, it's, <laughs> it's an interesting, it's a very interesting um, legal case. And look, uh, my mission here is to get this to the Supreme Court so that they can resolve the key issues here. I think the biggest issue is whether an incumbent president can strip a predecessor of executive privilege. I mean, look, please understand this. Um, if that happens, if the courts allow that to stand, the Justice Department gets away with that, that will essentially kill the institution of executive privilege as we know it. And it exists dating back to the days of George Washington for a very, very, very good reason, uh, which is to allow candor from people like me sitting in places like the Oval Office so that a president can make effective and informed and optimal uh, decision making. Anyway, um, I'm going to take one last Mr. question. Mr. Hang on, hang on. Do me a favor, okay? It's been a long day. I'm going to take one last question. Do me the courtesy when I leave here, because I've been generous with my time and I've got nothing more to say. Just let me walk out of here and and, and behave in a, in a civil manner. So I'll take one last question. Yeah, go ahead. Have you read my case? Yeah. So what did I say in my case about that? I'm curious to hear it from you. What did I say in my case about that? This is what we do in Professor Law. You said you read my case. You asked me a question. What, what, what did I say about me representing myself? Okay. Any other questions? I didn't read your case, one Why are you representing yourself? Do you think it's a good idea? <clears throat> I'm representing myself uh, pro se. Uh, because I do not want to be dragged down into the muck uh, of spending hundreds of thousands of dollars of my retirement savings um, on this kind of venture. I'm going to evaluate my legal strategy in, in, in light of what has happened uh, with this, and uh, there will be more to follow. But if you would, please, don't scream at me when I stop. Don't follow me. Just let me walk home, and I would much appreciate that. It's been a long day. I've been generous with my time. God bless America. Thank you.